Fear not, little flock, for you are of more value than many sparrows. Be seated. I'm Bill Dulos, and I'm an alcoholic, and a drug addict, and a deacon. <laughs> Not that there's any necessary relationship among the three. I've been a drug addict and an alcoholic for a long time in recovery, but just recently a deacon. So maybe my life will change for the better. Let's hope so. It's my privilege this morning as the leader of our ministry of Jubilee Homes, a ministry of four homes and 50 beds which we offer to the men and women in recovery in the West San Gabriel Valley. Several of those folks are here with us this morning. Some of them worship with us regularly. If they have not been intimidated by drugs or alcohol, they surely won't be intimidated by their presence in this august gathering this morning. They are coming here to share their experience, strength, and hope, and I am here to share my gratitude to this church for sponsoring my life and my ministry and these homes and this ministry of Jubilee for the last 12 years. This marks our 12-year anniversary of our presence here at the Church of Our Savior. So I'm pleased to introduce, uh, first of all, a, a resident of our Fair Oaks house, Kenneth. Good morning. Good morning. I'm 36 years old. I'm the middle of six siblings. Um, I was brought up in a very physical, emotional, and abusive family. My mom was an alcoholic. My dad was a functioning alcoholic, and he worked. Um, I started using drugs and alcohol at the age of 17 to just cope. Um, I mainly used it to su um, submish or submit feelings that I had that were coming up. Um, I used alcohol and drugs to not feel, to not have to deal with reality. I, um, I carried on this way for probably about from 17 till I was 24, and that's when I first came to know Christ. Um, and that's whenever I, I, I experienced a joy for God that I've, I've never experienced before in my life. Um, did really well for three years, but I had put a lot on God's plate. Um, and so what ended up happening was I had went to England and got into a problem there, and I didn't know how to deal with it. So I couldn't understand why God would do that to me. And so I put on the gloves with God for 10 years. I've been an addict for more than half of my, my life that I've been here on earth. Um, I... Uh, for 11 years, I, I battled with my addiction and wasn't ready because I knew God. I wasn't ready to, to give to him everything I needed. Um, so September 26th of 2013, I put myself in the Salvation Army Rehab where I spent six months and in doing so, I graduated. On the 26th of this month, I will have nine months clean and sober, and thanks to Bill and the Jubilee Houses, uh, when I graduated, I was able to go to a safe environment with a uh, really good structure and um, an awesome resident manager, and that's, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. And our next speaker is from our El Nido House and Apartments, Frank Rios. Yeah, good morning uh, to morning. the congregation. 
a beautiful church. Um, let's see. I am a resident at the Alnito House, and uh, I've been there right around Thanksgiving. Um, I showed up there homeless. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Bill, you know, for welcoming me into the uh, program there. And uh, Bill Morgan, thank you. Uh, and Fabian also, thanks Fabian. You know, him, him and Reagan, uh, they do a wonderful job there. They, uh, they know what they're doing and they, they, they come from love and they, they, they care and they help everybody there. Uh, thanks Fabian. You know, um, you know also I'm, I, I'd like to thank uh, Church of Our Savior for welcoming the big book comes alive. You know, we get the opportunity to come here to the church. Thanks, Kenny. And uh, do the seminars, you know, it's, uh, it's a good thing, you know, and, and I would like to thank the church for that. You know, um, you know, I've been separated from, from drugs and alcohol for, for, for a pretty long time. You know, uh, that's not really a struggle for me right now. You know, um, what I have, and most of us experience uh, our living problems. <laughs> we can we could pretty much relate with that, you know. And uh, you know, when I first got to the El Nido house, you know, I was sitting out on the back uh, porch, you know, staring down at the parking lot, and I and I said, you know, how did a nice guy like me end up in a place like this, <laughs> you know? And you know, my my thinking's off, you know. It's it's uh, <laughs> you know. So I stick around there and, you know, the, the, the blessings start to show up, you know. Uh, I've been able to be of service, you know, uh, working with a few gentlemen there. You know, it, 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 it's really been a blessing, you know. Um, like I said, my thinking is twisted, you know. I, 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 I tend to dwell on negativity, you know, and, 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 you know, things are changing for me there. You know, and, and I'd like to say this, you know, as far as the house goes, you know, location, location, location. You know, it, it is a beautiful spot for us. You know, the, the, the resources around us are, are very abundant. You know, you can probably do any type of shopping you need real close by. Um, you know, it's got a lot of resources for our human conditions. You know, they, they, they seem to meet a lot of our, our needs there, you know. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with too many of the other houses, although I've been uh, to the Raymond House, uh, who John Barrios is, is doing a great job there. Thanks, John. You know, I, I don't know what what uh, what the future holds for me. You know, I, I just be of service and wait for the calling. You know, we'll 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 see what happens. You know, I am extremely grateful for for the Alameda House. You know, uh, I've met some uh, really great people there. You know, I've known Fabian for many years. I've known Mr. Morgan for a lot of years, Mr. Dulas, you know, since he's joined our group. You know, uh, everybody uh, ha ha has enhanced our, our, our recovery over there. You know, uh, I don't know what, what, what much more to say. I mean, uh, this is where, you know, you kind of think of these transitional houses as being just, you know, passing through, but, you know, uh, perhaps there'll be some lifelong friends, you know, we can, we can hook up and, uh, and, and, and continue in our journey, you know, and, and what I'd like to do is thank the Church of Our Savior, you know, uh, they are a very, very giving uh, organization, you know, and, and, and to let you guys know, we appreciate and, and you are helping, you are helping. And I'll tell you, you know, I don't have much to offer, but, but what I do have, I, I will share. And for any one of you guys that, that would like to come around just to visit, say hi, I live in apartment four, you can knock on the door and, and ask for Frank. Thank you. And next we have, uh... One of our managers, the Raymond House, John, come forth. Good morning. Good morning. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank God 
in Christ for giving me the opportunity to uh, be standing here today and, and, and share with you a little bit of my experience, strength, and hope. If it wasn't for God, uh, you would not be seeing me here today. Um, I am 35 years old. Uh, I have two children, uh, two and one. And, uh, and uh, because of God, I, I have the, you know, I, I'm a father today. And I'm actually present in their lives. I uh, started drugs and alcohol. I'm also a drug addict and alcoholic. I don't know if I mentioned that. But uh, I started drugs and alcohol at a very young age. Uh, I always carried around, even before drugs and alcohol, I always carried around this feeling of, uh, of being a little bit different than, than the next person, uh, just for various reasons. And, and it had nothing to do with the life I was living at home and, and, and my parents. Uh, they did everything right. I came from a fairly healthy home uh, with good values and uh, a lot of good teaching and, and, and a lot of good support. Uh, so just kind of let you know that, that this uh, disease that I suffer from uh, can just find itself just about anywhere. So, if, you know, if there's someone like me in, in your homes or one of your friends, uh, uh, this disease just, it, it doesn't discriminate. Um, I've been in and out of the program since I was 18. That was the first time I was court ordered. I definitely didn't come in willingly. And uh, it took kind of a nudge from the judge to get here. And, uh, and I've just been kind of in and out of programs uh, for a really long time. I thought, you know, I've kind of lost count of the amount of times I've been in, in rehabs and jail. And uh, I started to get this feeling that uh, there, was really, there was really no hope for me. I mean, I mean if, if the last house on the block, which I believed was a rehab and a halfway house, wasn't, wasn't saving me, I thought I was just basically unsavable. And I carried that feeling around for a long time, and that just helped my, you know, helped me drive to, you know, just to continue to do wrong and hurt a lot of people. I mean, just the amount of people I've hurt along the way is, is just insurmountable. I mean, there's just there's just a really long list, and over the years, that list is kind of every time I go back out, just gets smaller and smaller because basically there's just nobody else around. Uh, so that's kind of my experience. You know, there's a lot more, but it's a very short time to speak. Um, my strength, uh, this time around, I'm coming up on two years, and, the only, and, and, and in reality, if two years ago you would have told me I would be coming up on two years, I would have thought you were lying. Uh, I didn't think it was possible. The, just the thought of being able to go through life uh, without some kind of aid well, that, that you know, I put into my body, uh, I, just, I just didn't see how anybody else was doing it. And, and honestly, I kind of thought all of you were doing the exact same thing. You were drinking at home, you were taking pills. That this, is, this is how I thought when I got here. Um, but this time around, I, I, I was desperate enough. I had, I had one on the way. I had one already, and he'd been around for my son. He'd been here for about a year, and I'd spent little to no time with him just due to the life that I was living. And I had another one on the way. And uh, I got, and, and, and I was sitting in this, this hotel room, you know, just in not a really good spot, surrounded by definitely not a really good support group. And uh, I, I just got really desperate. And... Um, and I, I, I'd kind of given up on uh, the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, and I'd given up on friends and family, and I'd given up on, uh, uh, you know, I've, I, I did rehabs. I, I just kind of got tired, and I didn't believe that they were going to work for me, so I really had no one else to turn to uh, but God. And I had no relationship with him, and I didn't know what he looked like, and I didn't know how I was supposed to pray or whatever it is I was supposed to do. But I remember the day I was sitting in that hotel room, and I said, I just want something different. I need something different, and I don't know how to do this. And please just guide me. And, uh, and you know, in so many words, the best I could muster at that time, and, and that's exactly what he has done up to this point. Uh, I just kind of stopped. I ceased to fight uh, life, and I ceased to fight, you know, the people around me, and I, and I, and I, I, I just stopped trying to hide from God, because I think that's basically what I've been doing all these years, is just trying to hide from him. You know, doing my stuff in, in, in dark rooms and, and coming out at night and thinking I was hiding from something, and I wasn't. Uh, and, and, uh, and I believe that's where most of my strength comes from. And, and at first, uh, I didn't really know what God looked like, so I was kind of borrowing, you know, but I prayed that I wanted to get to know him, and I wanted that relationship. And so I prayed for that. And my first roommate in a sober living, Fabian Gonzalez put me in this sober living out in Azusa, uh, my first roommate was, uh, you know, very much into the Bible, and that's exactly what he did every night, was, was read to me, regardless of whether or not I wanted to hear it. <laughs> 
And, uh, and, and, and something started to happen, you know. First I was kind of, you know, poking fun at him, oh, you know, why are you doing that? It's all about Alcoholics Anonymous. And, and, and I thought Alcoholics Anonymous, you know. There was still a lot of confusion there. And, uh, and something started to happen, it, you know. It, it just started to happen. I started to kind of open myself up and just kind of listen. You know, I wouldn't say anything, but I'd listen to everything he was saying. And, and there was a lot of good teachings. And, 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 I, and I, I, felt like, I felt like it was speaking to me, so I decided to start praying to Jesus Christ. And uh, that's kind of what I've been doing for the last two years. You know, first it was kind of a secret, like I didn't want to tell anybody. I thought I'd be, you know, they'd point me out. And, and kind of like the reading this morning, uh, uh, that they were just waiting for me to stumble and they wanted me to denounce him because they, you know, I, feel, I still feel like there's a lot of people out there waiting for me to come back and just waiting for me to walk through those, those dark doors. But... Uh, uh, my life has completely changed uh, uh, in, the, in the amount of time I, I've done that. At first, I thought I drugged myself into Alcoholics Anonymous, and, and now in hindsight, I can see that it was actually God that carried me to Alcoholics Anonymous. I used to think that uh, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, I, it did, it did help me find my, my higher power, God, Jesus. Uh, uh, but now I can see that it was actually God that... Uh, Give, that actually introduced me to the tool to help to help find him, which was Alcoholics Anonymous. So I'm eternally grateful to Alcoholics Anonymous as well. Uh, my hope um, is that uh, is obviously that I, that I can you know that I can uh, continue to live this life. You know, it's two years isn't a long time, but this is more than I could possibly ask for. When I first when I first decided to put the drugs and alcohol down, I I, I had all these ideas of what I wanted. And there, that was so far from, from what I actually wanted now that I, now that I look back on it. I have a peace of mind and I have a family and, and I can pass some good beliefs and, and, and uh, th you know, teachings on to my children. And, uh, and, I, and, and surprisingly enough, I didn't think that, that this would, I didn't see how helping someone else what was going to actually benefit me. It just didn't make any sense to me, but that's, that's, that's what I've learned that I, that I have to do now. And, and that's where I get most of my joy and, and, and peace and comfort because I believe it's what Christ wants me to do is, is to pass, uh, to kind of share my suffering and, 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 and the way I was able to get out of that with, with someone else who's going through something similar as to what I went through. So I just, well, I guess that's all I have to share. I just want to thank uh, uh, Church of Our Savior for, for, for supporting the homes. Uh, uh, I believe that there, I, I believe God's actually in these homes, and, and, and it's a great place. You know, some of these guys, the ones that truly want it or, or just have like that little seed of willingness to, to live something different, uh, it, it's absolutely amazing to watch what their lives become. I mean, I've, I've only been a house manager there for a short period of time, but being on the other side of the fence, listening to these guys trying to get into one of these homes, they're desperate. They're desperate, and they're willing to say anything they have to say to get into one of these places. And uh, just to watch your lives change, and I had a resident uh, uh, yesterday uh, just come down the stairs really happy. Um, I, I, he seemed like he'd been in a depression for a while, and, and he told me that his, uh, his father actually called him, who hadn't speak, spoke to in a few years, and just wanted to share with him how proud he was of him. And the last time I think he, he saw his father, he had, I think, like, took a lot of money from him. So, uh, you know, that, things like that are a big deal. They, they, they really are. To have, to have a family member want, want, want to talk to us again and, and say they're proud, I, I never thought I was going to hear anything like that again. My father, when I was 19 years old, said, you're no longer my son. And, uh, and I can tell you it's not like that today at all. And uh, I just want to thank the church for, for, for giving me this opportunity. And I want to thank God for the life that, that, he's, that he's blessed me with. Thank you. If anyone asks you whether you believe in miracles, you can point to these three lives and many more like them in our homes. And, and you can restore your faith in miracles that occur today. And we have the privilege, and I certainly have the privilege, along with Bill Morgan on our staff and Ken Hinge, our esteemed leader of our Big Book Comes Alive seminar and an esteemed icon of the recovery movement in the San Gabriel Valley along with Bill and Jim Martin, our leader 
of the Fair Oaks House and Fabian Gonzalez, our leader of the El Nido House and Apartments, John Barrios, our leader of Raymond House, Dixie Colas, who was at the early service with one of her residents, the leader of our Women's House. We all have the privilege of watching these miracles occur on a daily basis. It's, it's a great uplift for us, and I hope that you can share today in some of that sense of uplift. And on behalf of our board, many of whom are here today, uh, and behalf of our, our staff, our residents and our alumni, some of whom are here today, I want to say to you also that it's a privilege for me working the other end of the equation to represent you, the people of the Church of Our Savior and supporters of Jubilee Homes in this community, like Ralph here, who's come from All Saints Church to honor us today, and others here today, uh, to represent you to these people, men and women of God, children of God, who, uh, who know of the love of God because of your love and your support. We thank you.